Hi, welcome to Budget Model Railways and something a little bit different today. So this, uh, like a lot of my projects, is a culmination of several, if you like, objectives. So um, a while ago, reading one of the basic books on model railway layouts, I came across the Ingle Nook shunting puzzle track plan. Um, and it's one of those things you look at it and look at it and then you suddenly realise how clever it is. Because it's only two points, um, but it gives you three sidings. And if you use a card index system, so you number or name your wagons, you then can shunt them in any sort of combination that you want, um, which is really, really endless. Um, five or six wagons, um, and you're effectively got quite a lot of combinations. Now, if like me, you've got quite a connect collection of wagons, it's also fairly endless because you use that six or seven and then another time you use some different ones. Now, the advantage for me is these are very bright wagons. I've got white ones, I've got red ones, uh, I've got yellow ones, I've got um, quite a big range of, of um, HO wagons. Uh, and these were actually bought, these were brand new HO wagons by and large, bought for next to nothing. Uh, the Roco ones were five pound each um, because in the UK, obviously, it's not a big market. Um, so why HO? Well, before we come to that, I suppose it's fair to say, if you're watching this and thinking, look, I'm not going to watch this because this is HO. The, the, one of the purposes of this video is to show how fantastic the Ingle Nook concept is. So I'm doing this in HO for reasons I will come to, but watch the video anyway, because if you like the idea, then it would work just as well in double O. Um, you can just as easy have a station there and a good shed and a coal yard and a bit of scenery. Now, strangely enough, the first time I experimented with this, I did it in N. And the mistake I made in N is even though it was quite small, it was too big for N, I ended up with too much scenery. So why HO? Well, I've got this collection of um, wagons and I've also got three of these. So this is the... Um, I call it Pico, it's the German P-I-K-O, somebody will correct me I'm sure, um, if that's not the correct pronunciation. These are ridiculously good locomotives. They are currently around the £60 mark new. I'll say that again, £60 new. About half of what a double O loco will be. There's nothing as far as I'm concerned wrong with the detail of them, they are the hobby range. The grills are a, a, in one or two places are a, are a transfer. It's got a driver, it's got directional lights. They weigh a ton. They run incredibly smoothly, very slowly, very quietly. Um, quite exceptional, really. Um, and I've got two of them. I've got one of these and I've got a blue and white one. And I've also got a Mahano uh, similar model, which I actually bought secondhand for about £50. So these are really good locos for very little money, as is the rolling stock. Um, and I got big plans over the back here to do a big um, through station, triple bay European tr through station, which at some point I will. But I didn't like the idea of all these locos and rolling stocks sitting in boxes and not being used. And this really comes to the heart of what I feel about, you know, model railways, budget model railways. It's better to have something than nothing. So I can spend another two years planning my large layout or I can do what I did and in a week I could build this. This is just on what I showed the other day which are these hollow um, self-supporting cantilever shelves. This one didn't cost me anything. Um, it came sadly actually when we, we um, stripped out my, mo my late mother-in-law's house. She had a couple of them. I've added a bit of battening to give me another two centimetres of width. With hindsight, two extra centimetres of length would have been quite nice. This is 11 inches by 32 inches. Um, and I've still got a station. This is quite an important station to us. This was the first station we bought nine years ago. Me and Doug got into model railways. The very first project we did was actually going to be an 009 layout. Uh, and we bought this cheap second hand and it's been kicking around in boxes for nine years. So I really wanted to use that on here. The buildings are just second-hand ones that have been picked up from shows and things. There's a couple of Pico second-hand points there. I'm very inspired by 
uh, Continental Modeler, as you know. And I like some of the very open layouts. Um, you know, things like coal and, and aggregates just dumped, um, ready to go. And I've also got, this is difficult to see, but I'll do another video. I'm filming this on a tripod because I don't want um, there to be a lot of shaking. So I'll do another video showing some more detail, but this is a rather nice coal servicing depot that I got from eBay, just dropped in there. So there's a lot going on in, in 32 inches um, by 11. Now, of course, if you did this in double O, you could go and use a much shorter locomotive like a Terrier, and you'd be able to use the shorter UK wagons, which would give you even more scope. But I wanted to run, to be able to run my HO collection. So um, I'll try and do a little demonstration. Um, it, it, my shunting's not the best in the world, uh, so it might go a little astray. Um, so what we'll do actually, um, as you know, I don't have the ability now to edit videos. Uh, Doug did all the editing. Uh, he's gone off to uni and he's very busy. Uh, so these have to be filmed in a one, uh, warts and all, as some of you saw the other day when I demolished my platform canopy. So now you could argue that the ingle nook's a little unrealistic. There's no passing loop. Um, my view is it still allows you to do what you wanted. Perhaps the track plan at some point has been rationalised. The station is just serviced by rail buses. Uh, this is the end of a, of a rail line and the locos propelling the locos, uh, propelling the wagons up and taking them off. Or of course, there could be a passing loop a little bit further down the line where the locos, where the wagons will be changed. So all I'm gonna do is I've got my cards. I shuffle my cards uh, and I'll do it here, but then I've got a little shelf below and I lay it, lay it out in order. So that's the order I want the wagons in. So for ease of convenience, I'm going to put them down here on a little shelf. Um, and it then becomes a question of working out how you want to have the wagons organized. Now, in my case, I tend to like to start with putting them the, the last one first. Some people work, work the first one first. So I'm going to run my loco in. Um, that's the first wagon I want at the end. Now I'm going to run this slightly faster than it would run because otherwise the video will take forever. Um, and there'll be all sorts of different ways of doing this. If you're offended by the hand of God, then this probably isn't going to be a great video for you. Um, it doesn't bother me. I'm happy to do manual uncoupling. You know, I said it would be a bit rough. Um, these Euro couplings, I've got to do a little bit more experimentation with because basically what happens is they are slightly different designs and they're not always as intercompatible as you would think. Um, but yes, of course, I could go into all the expensive and time consuming auto coupling options. I do find it quite amusing sometimes. We're budget model railways. And anybody that follows us knows that's very, very much what we do. And I'll get some people, somebody will say, oh, well, why aren't you using such and such system? You know, it, it would only cost you 10 pound a wagon, uh, you know, and all this sort of thing. That kind of defeats the whole point of it being a budget model railway. Um, if I wanted to throw ton loads of money at it, I'd be like all the other videos that are on YouTube. Um, we don't. We do things as, as cheaply and simply as we can. So that's that wagon there. Oh, that's never done that before. Uh, some of us discussed this the other day that all locos run absolutely perfectly right up to the point you want to film them and then they stop working. And then we want that one in there. Like that, and we want this one out. Um, so this thing, oh, I am, I'm using a slightly different controller. I'm using, I haven't rigged up one of ours yet. Uh, I'm using a, an old Mahano one that's very good, but I've, I'm out of practice with it. Uh, the uncoupling hook, if anybody asks, 
uh, is a bent paper clip on the end of an old needle file. Uh, simple as that. This is where it's going to get a little bit complicated, I think. I quite like these, they do make you stop and think. I suppose that's why they're called shunting puzzles. Hopefully that will come undone. We'll need that one. I've often been asked to do a shunting video, so here we are doing a shunting video. It will be quite interesting actually to see um, how many people, um, I've done that wrong, so I'm busy talking, how many people um, actually watch the video <laughs> all the way through to the end. My suspicion is not many. Um, it's quite tricky to do a shunting video. Nearly always something is unreliable. But then I don't think that matters. If you quietly, as I am in my shed, shunting, I'm just going to, there's a very slight, I haven't quite leveled this off yet. There we go. Um, then what does it matter if you've made a few errors um, like that where I've forgotten to change the point? You're just down here having fun shunting wagons. Oh, yeah. Um, this is the only problem I'm hitting with this. Uh, yeah, you see now, it's quite clever because I've got to think about what I'm going to do. It's, it's not quite wide enough to get that in there. Um, got myself in a bit of a pickle here because I need... Ah, yeah, I need that one out of the way. Ah, I can see what I can do. It, this is why I like the shunting puzzles, because it, it does make you stop and think um, what you've got to do. I think what I've got to do, I don't know if it's going to be too long. Yeah, probably. I'm going to have to cheat here, I think. Um, let's do it this way. This is going to be quite a puzzle, this one. So I've got the four I want. I'm trying to get rid of the white one. And I'm sure any number of you are sitting there saying, you idiot, do it this way. Um, but um, that's, that's, the fun of, that's the fun of doing this. What we're going to do, let's see if we can get rid of this one. Come back for that. That's, that's what I think we've got to do. But it does, I'm quite pleased this isn't going according to plan because it does show you why even with two points and three sidings, yeah, that's it. It becomes a challenge, it becomes enjoyable. Um, and in this case, um, you know, my loco's working quite hard, it's working well, it's doing what it's meant to do. Yes, it's a bit big for a shunting loco, but that's the loco I've got. They're the ones I want to see running. Um, and they are very, very good shunting layout locos. As I have to say, most continental and American outline locos are. It just seems to be something some of the UK outline stuff struggles at. So now we can come back and get these. Like that. Those poor old cars, though, They're having to wait a long old time, aren't they? <laughs> go. I'm just going to pull that clear so that you can see it. So that was what my cards told me to do. Brown open, yellow, brown box, grey box. Um, they're now in the right order and away we can go. Now my fiddle yard's not long enough um, just because it, to get this set up I've just got a bit of wood on there. Um, it, it doesn't extend as far as I need it to and there is another foot. Uh, and that will then enable me to take the train right out. However, I'm quite happy. Uh, what I'll do is I'll shunt that back in. I'll leave the wagons there and I'll reposition a couple. There we go. Um, so they're now in a different order to the way they started. Take the loco off, get the cards, shuffle the cards again, 
different combination and off we go um there's six wagons there uh, and i only take four at a time um so that leaves me then always a couple that have got to be moved around and left um and i think that quite neatly demonstrates i didn't time how long that took but it was quite quite good fun you sit there you can do that you've got a nice setting now what i am just going to try here if i can without stopping the film working so we're not on the tripod now so uh, what i'm just going to do is just give you a little bit of a tour of the layout so the tunnel mouth there came from uh, any scale models uh, painted up very nicely uh, the banks are just foam and scatter and some trees and bushes shoved on the top as always a couple of cheap buildings i got from something last year cobbled road is just metcalf cobbles cars are all second hand as are the built the idea is a little bit of a parking bay there um, huts and buildings that i've just picked up second hand a uh, bit of a coal yard um, the rather nice station that we've had for all those years um, this is a bit of a goods yard i'll just pull the wagons out of the way that's just a bit of um, foam board embossed sheet edge uh, metcalf um, card top the back scene is just a photo back scene and that's actually the only new thing that was purchased for the layout apart from the tunnel mouth just the tunnel mouth and the back scene and it's just a gauge master n gauge one because that was exactly the right length um, and only six inches high i didn't want a great tall back scene um, if I move these out of the way, I haven't got the link, I'm afraid, but I got this off eBay uh, and it's rather a nice little item. I've added the coal. It's a little bit under scale. It's probably better as any, in all honesty, but it works OK for, for what it is. It's a few fuel tanks, a bit of coal and some water. Um, again, little good shed that came uh, from somewhere. Uh, you know, I just buy cheap secondhand buildings when I see them. So. Is it the big grand HO layout I planned originally? No, but it's only taken me a week. It doesn't take up any space and it enables me to take out my HO collection and run some trains and do some shunting rather than them being sat in boxes. And I can only say if you're one of those people that keeps saying I haven't got the room and one day I'll do a model railway, just, just do this. You, you can buy these shelving units quite cheaply. This is less than three feet by a foot it'll store on its end your separate fiddle yard mine is literally just a bit of wood um it's only two points so even if you had to buy the buy the points new it wouldn't cost you an arm and a leg and this would work just as well in double o i say in fact it would work better in double o i didn't build a double o one because i've got a superb shunting layout over there so i, I don't need another double o shunting layout um what I don't have is HO, and that's what I wanted to build. So whilst it's not for everybody, you could replicate it in double O, but I do think as an HO layout, it's rather nice. I've got a really great uh, Electrotren little French 060 loco as well. I've got some really nice, a really nice uh, Lima uh, HO Italian diesel, which is just as nice running. So, you know, a little bit of leeway. It is continental. I could run my French and my Italian locos in here as well. Um, and I might actually do a running session on that at some point. So there we go. Um, it's been a lot of fun to make. Good for me, quite quick project, quite effective. Um, ballast mat is just roofing felt, again, as always. And I can sit down here, I was down here last night for an hour, happily using my Continental Wagon uh, selection, three or four locos, great fun. So hope you enjoyed that. Hope some of you stayed till the end and um, more videos from us soon.